welcome to the next lecture of metrology and instrumentation this is salman assistant professor isl college of engineering department of mechanical engineering so in this lecture we are going to discuss about angular measurement so in previous class we have started uh, introduction part of what is angular measurement so in in previous class even we have seen about what is linear measurement how we are going to measure the linear measurement in using various kinds of instrumentations so in this uh, we are going to discuss about uh, angular measurement so precise measurement of angles is one of the most important technique in most of the workshops and tool rooms we used to measure the angles of interchangeable parts so where we are going to fix the part types of gaze fix fixtures etc some of the measurements of uh, angle are nothing but bore flak angles uh, gear angles so these are the few things which we need to be measured by using different uh, angular uh, measurement instrumentations sometimes the prime objective of measurement is not to measure the angle uh, but whereas to measure the uh, alignment of the machine parts okay so the measurement of straightness flatness uh, uh, and parallelism of machine parts requires high sensitive instrumentation such as autocolorimeter so the angle reading from such measurements is also known as error in alignment so the first instrument which you generally use for uh, measuring of angle from your school days you generally use a protractor which is a basic measuring device to find the angle okay yeah, but uh, the but whereas it can provide the least amount of only 1 degree for small protractors and, and and few protractors can even have half degree half degree okay so however sim uh, simple though it may be the user should uh, follow the basic principles of usage for measuring of angle accurately for instance the surface of the instrument found to be parallel to the surface of the other object and the reference angle of the projector should be perfectly collide okay when you are using protractor you always see that the the line on the protractor and the line which you are on which you are measuring the scale should be evenly uh, aligned if they are not parallel if they are not aligned properly the angle measurement will give you some kind of error like a steel rule the simple protractor has a limited usage in engineering and metrology but a few additional simple mechanisms which can be used for like for the same protractor we use vernier scale main scale just we have used in the linear measurement similar way we use some kind of uh, protractors where there are some main scale vernier scales which can be rotated blade so that it can able to use the versatility okay so the the first one is a universal bevel protractor is one of such instrumentation which has a mechanism that enables the easy measurement so this is universal bevel protractor so bevel is nothing but angle okay so this is your flat surface on which you have to keep the surface and you have to rotate okay so this is your base plate parallel to the base plate and we rot rotate it so that this is aligned to the uh, surface and this is aligned to the substance where we have to measure okay so between these two the angle is measured like this okay the universal protractor with 5 minute accuracy so in this you can measure till 5 minutes so 1 degree is uh, divided to 60 minutes so among that 1 by 60 you can measure till 5 minutes okay so it has a base plate or a stock whose surface has to be a high degree of flatness and surface finish so this is generally which is uh, kept on the base surface with respect to this we generally measure the angle okay an adjustable blade is attached to the circular disc which is used to coincide with the angular surface so this adjustable blade has to be aligned with the surface where we are going to measure the angle for example you want to measure i will show you want to measure this angle this this ray has to be measured what is the angle between them. then this will be aligned with this this will come and sit with this parallel and this will go and come in contact with this surface so because of that what is the angle which you are going to obtain here that is going to be recorded or that is going to be studied okay so in universal bevel protractor also the same kind of vernier caliper scale where we have one main scale another is in vernier scale the main scale main scale is made of uh, degrees that is nothing but uh, 1 degree maximum the least count of this is 1 degree and it will be measuring from 0 to 90 degrees maximum on either side so totally 180 degrees so in vernier scale we have 24 divisions so 12 divisions on one side and 12 divisions on other side so among the 12 divisions so this is 60 means So uh, 60 minutes, 60 minutes is nothing but one degree. So this zero, so this 60, how many it is divided? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. So twelve divided by 60. So each is nothing but five units. That what we have to consider. 
so if for example if your zero is uh, coinciding with any of the like this zero is coinciding with 10 degrees so 10 degrees first you have to write plus how many minutes you have to check so how many minutes how you will check so what is the vernier scale and what is the main scale division which are exactly coincident so with that you can able to measure the uh, minutes so that we will find that for example if it is measuring like 5 units or 10 units or 30 units so how we will count for this 30 this that is nothing but 10 degrees 30 minutes you will write 10 degrees 30 minutes so these are minute scale malice count again there are few bl protractors in which we can able to measure even seconds so the, uh, for measurement we have two things one is acute measurement one is obtuse measurement acute measurement is nothing but uh, angle less than 45 obtuse is nothing but which is more than 45 or more than 90 so in this so one side this is uh, this is the adjustable workpiece we can able to measure this is positive this is second quadrant this is fourth quadrant measurement okay this is fourth quadrant measurement acute angle this is acute angle this is obtuse angle that is nothing but uh, the total angle which is more than 45 degrees okay clear so next these are 90 degrees how we are going to find the 90 degrees 90 degrees so this will be like horizontal surface staying perpendicular this is uh, horizontal surface this okay next this is uh, surface angle subtended so how we are going to take so since the universal bell protector can measure both the acute and obtuse angles case should be taken exercise to clearly differentiate between the angles being indicated on the scale and its supplement so the dial gauge is uh, graduated from 0 to 90 in four quadrants as shown in the figure for example if you are having a uh, base is like this and your sub blade is like this so what is the angle here you are going to obtain 90 degrees so this is your second quadrant this is your first quadrant this is your third quadrant this is your fourth quadrant okay so with the orientation of blade with respect to the is said to be 90 degrees okay so in this way we are going to measure the angle this is your angle here so this is your supplement of angle this is your angle this is your supplement of angle this is your angle so in this way the mostly the angles has to be measured like this from this part to this surface to the blade always okay so angles and their supplements so angles suppose the blade is turned clockwise as shown in the figure the angles read directly as shown uh, directly as those that are formed from the blade and to the base counterclockwise direction thus if the angle of the workpiece are being measured in quadrant 1 and 3 the angles can be read directly from the scale on the other side if the angles are present on the second and fourth quadrant then we have to go for supplement of angles what does that mean is nothing but for example if you are going to uh, keep this in first quadrant or second quadrant the base is here so the angle is subtended here so this is your angle this is your angle similarly if third angle is there this and this can be measured if it is in second quadrant if this is your angle then you have to measure the supplement of the angle after finding this supplement you have to find the angle okay supplement of the angle you can be able to find so further case C the illustrate a situation where the blade is turned to a clockwise direction so generally we will measure the angle in counterclockwise direction turn towards the clockwise direction here the angle can be read directly on two quadrants namely second and fourth quadrant these angles are formed in clockwise direction from the blade to the base and they measured are acute angles okay so see here the angle generally we measure in clockwise direction but here it is counterclockwise direction here you can see this this angle here they have written this is in counterclockwise direction because of that we are going for supplement of angles okay next is optical bevel protractor optical bevel protractor is nothing but instead of having this all readings along with this there will be a, a provision which where they will be given a lens so on that lens you can able to measure the uh, readings properly because while while you measure the readings on this scale so there will be some uh, errors happening so generally if this when they are measuring this scale there will be uh, uh, the the, the, re the readings will be in inappropriate even if you miss one single reading you will be losing one five minutes so to avoid that in B uh, in optical bevel protractor what there will be a uh, pressure is so along with that there will be a provision for uh, 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 lens so on the lens there will be a zooming property which will be able to zoom the reading so that you can able to uh, easily read the scaling so they e, 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 uh, ipc is provided to facilitate the easy reading of the protractor that is nothing but a lens so in in protractor without vernier the dial gauge readings can be directly read 
through the eyepiece. In ver vernier protractor, the eyepiece is attached on the top of the vernier scale itself, which together moves as a single unit over the stationary dial gauge. So the the eyepiece provided a magnified view of the readings. That is nothing but that's what I have been telling. That in optical bevel protractor, there will be a lens on which you can be able to zoom the reading so that you can easily read the recordings. Next is sign bar. Already we have discussed about uh, um, slip gauges. So these slip gauges are generally uh, slip gauges are generally used to measure the linear measurement. Okay, and also this uh, basing on this linear measurement, we can able to use uh, another device which is called as a sign bar. So what is the sign bar is nothing but uh, so this this surface is generally a flat surface so this surface is a flat surface whereas these two surfaces are nothing but my uh, what we say or my datum line for example if you want to measure uh, the angle by which the surface has been rotated what we will do is we keep the datum as it is so this line and the other surface sorry so on the other surface this surface we will be trying to tilt so what we will do is we will keep this uh, like this and the other surface will be tilted like this since we know the distance between this center and this center always for a sign bar the distance between the two centers will be known so what does that mean Th this height you will be known that is nothing but your hypotenuse will be known and uh, how you will find the vertical distance between these two that is nothing but from the datum line to this roller which has been lifted to uh, to being the so i will draw the uh, it will be like this so how i will do this heighting is nothing but i will take the slip gauges and i will try to arrange the slip gauges on this okay after arranging the slip gauges so again how i will check that is the surface is flat or not so for that we will have a dial gauge so i think i have this i have a dial gauge so uh, on the surface where we have to measure the angle i will keep the surface like this on this surface so what we are trying to do is this surface which has been uh, uh, taper i will keep the taper surface on this and i will try to keep a dial gauge on this i will try to move the dial gauge on this surface because the surface is horizontal the dial gauge reading should be equal to zero every time so i will keep the dial gauge reading initially zero and after keeping it zero i will try to move the dial gauge along this surface okay since the surface is horizontal what we should get the value always zero itself if you are not getting zero that means you are having some deflection on this surface so you have to uh, arrange the height arrange the height of the surface until unless you get the dial gauge reading initially zero and finally zero all the part should be equal to zero in the dial gauge okay so after that you will have the slip gauges so to find the height of this so you know the height of this you know the length of this so this l is known so you can find the value of this theta so what is this theta this theta is nothing but sin theta is equal to h by l i have that formula here sin theta is equal to h by l so i can able to measure the angle so this angle will be always equal to the angle subtended here okay this angle and this angle are subtended to equal to be equal how they are present equal is nothing but this is similarly to a line passing through uh, if there are two parallel lines passing uh, and there is a transpose which is passing through if there is angle subtended here that will be always equal to the angle here so this is nothing but um, alternate interior angles these are nothing but alternate interior angles when there are two parallel lines and there is a transpose which is passing through now the transpose is this one which is passing through and my tra and my parallel lines are this surface and this horizontal surface both are horizontal to one another and both are parallel to one another and this is a transpose line which is passing through so since this is creating an angle here so the same angle should be in intended or subtended here so that is nothing but by using this we can able to measure the angle by using sign bar so measuring the unknown angles with sign bar can be done easily uh, the dial gauge is fixed to the strand which is brought in contact with the top surface of the part at one end and set to zero now the dial, dial gauge is moved along the surface a zero reading on the dial gauge indicates that workpiece is perfectly horizontal and set angle is to be right angle if you are getting the value of the dial gauge some error some zero or some five five degrees you are going to get that means you have to increase the height of the slip sign bar you have to increase the height of the sign bar you have to still make some angle tapper should be made okay so the sign block sign plates and uh, sign tables are generally there so this is a sign block this is a sign table so on this surface this is a horizontal surface you are going to tilt this this is sign block okay 
so which is having similar to that of the sine bar next is sine center this is also same so there is a roller pivot another side is uh, you will be having like this so in this uh, just like your tail stock and head stock which is present in your uh, which is present in your lay, uh, lathe machine similarly there will be a tail stock and head, head stock which can be adjustable from one side uh, one side is fixed one so you will keep a work piece which is conical or whose angle is to be measured we will keep that work piece and we will try to move this and we will try to fix this after fixing we will try to uh, lift the height until unless this surface which is tapered becomes horizontal until unless this taper surface becomes horizontal so how we will find that is the surface is horizontal or not is same case again we here also we will use a dial gauge here dial gauge fixed to this surface on this and i will try to move the dial gauge along this surface you have to keep the reading zero all the time so uh, once you know that you know the distance between these two centers you know the height of the slip gauges so how to increase the height of this uh, sign bar is nothing but by keeping series of sign gauges series of sign gauges slip gauges sorry series of slip gauges so initially we will try to keep a slip, big slip gauge and uh, then we will try to arrange small 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 because if you try to keep two slip gauges at a time you will not able to get that uh, angle easily so initially you will try to keep bigger one then small small again this you will going to keep as 0.01 we have yesterday seen that there will be thin thin uh, slip gauges also like 1.01 1.02 also we will try to keep those slip gauges okay next is angle gauges as like slip gauges there is another uh, slip gauges there is another device which is nothing but called as slip gauges so what is slip gauges is nothing but we will try to uh, if you want to measure the angle between the two surfaces we will be having two uh, angle gauges similar to slip gauges we will try to add them okay so uh, i think i have not kept the image of that so like this if you want to measure the angle between these two i will keep one big slip gauge which is of 30 degrees block after that i will try to keep a another block which is having an angle of 5 degrees is added okay so with this you can able to measure the angle if you want to subtract them we will try to right uh, arrange like this okay so since this is 30 i will try to make this less okay basing on that we can able to identify the so this is in this way we can able to arrange the angle gauges as the slip gauges we are arranging to measure the linear measurement similarly the angle gauges are used to measure the angle between the two surfaces okay so the reverser of angular block makes it a total subtraction so see here the, the block here both are in a same direction so this is a short side this is a short side this is a longer side this is a longer side if both longer sides are in same direction that means the angle has to be added if they are reverse so this is a shorter side where but whereas for the above angle gauge this is longer side if they are arranged in that direction then it is called as reversing or subtraction of the angles here we have written the reversal of an angle block subtracts itself from the total angle generated by combining of other block okay this provides a scope for various combinations by using this we can able to measure small small angles also okay next is true set true square so true square is nothing but we will be having a square plot on which there will be a n number of holes so basing on the n number of holes a true square is used as a com uh, convenient tool generally this we generally used in uh, arrangement of tools in a, a tool post okay so with an angle gauge uh, block set it is available for tool room and laboratory master set so as the name itself says that it is a square plate which is made of hardened and wear resistant steel plate the uh, all faces of the true squares are at an angle of 90 degrees means all the surfaces like this this surface this surface all are at 90 degrees to one another it has a high degree of optical flatness and parallelism to permit the use of auto calorimeter the main advantage of true square is extended the range of angle block set at 360 degrees but it is but in degree minute or second step the figure above illustrates the shape of the true square so in this holes we will try to arrange so initially if you want to measure the angle between these two surfaces i will play, i will keep one at this surface at this hole another i'll keep it this hole so i will try to measure the angle between this two. i can rotate the tool okay i can rotate the tool if i want to make the perpendicular operation i will keep the tool here if i want to make some angular mesh so i will keep the tool here so compound indexing we might have studied in a, uh, our lathe chapter so in the same way we are going to use this true square okay next is spirit level spirit level is nothing but uh, there is there will be a liquid like this so you might have seen this in a dslr camera stands so in this camera stands there will be having a small liquid where you can able to tilt that so basing on the tilt this is nothing but the zero when you tilt there will be uh, 
the angle will be varied okay so basing on that we will have spirit level this these are details of that i typical spirit levels are as shown in the figure the base called as a reference plane is seated on the machine uh, which is where the straightness or flatness has to be measured so when the base is horizontal the bubble is at the center if it is at engraved what happens to the spirit is the spirit moves out of the horizontal so that is nothing but the moves the bubble shift to the highest point of the tube okay the wherever the highest point if it is your other side is a highest point for example uh, if it if the surface is like this your bubble will move to the this end if you if this this surface is like this then the bubble will move to the this end so basing on the shift of the position of the bubble you can able to measure uh, identify that towards which end the surface is uh, taper okay towards the which end the surface is taper so basing on the same principle we have another device that is nothing but called as clinometer so in clinometer is a special case of spirit level while the spirit is restricted to relatively small angles the clinometer can be used to much larger angles in spirit level we can able to measure only small angles whereas in clinometers we can able to measure the larger angles also so that is nothing but what we will do is in this there will be a provision like this lock nut and this so wherever this is my base so along the base what i will try to do this uh, spirit level is i will try to rotate the spirit level and try to bring the surface uh, with respect to horizontal or with respect to the angle where i have to measure so with that rest surface this this uh, what we say the spirit level will be horizontal with respect to this surface for example if i want to measure the angle like this so i will rotate this the sur this provision which is provided here uh, this will be rotated and brought horizontal to this so we can show this so this this can be rotated like this it can be rotated like this where the how to my, uh, find the angle so along that angle so these are the readings of the angle along that reading i will bring and i will brought it to stationary so what happens to the spirit level uh, when you are rotating until unless the surface which is below this becomes horizontal to it the spirit level will not come to the center if it is taper the spirit level if the angle is more the spirit level will go to the top if the angle is less the spiral the spirit level will go to the lesser uh, lower end similar to the previous spirit level ex experiment okay so it is also used for setting incl uh, inclination table or a jig boring so if you want to make jigs uh, for machine so if you want to make at a set at a particular angle if you don't know the exact angle you can use this device and you can able to keep the angle okay so they provide a superior accuracy compared to that of a ordinary spirit level okay so to measure with clinometer the base is kept on the surface of the workpiece the lock nut is loosened and the dial gauge uh, and the dial gauge the circular scale is gently rotated okay it is being rotated till the bubble in the spirit level is approximately at the center now the lock nut is tightened and the fine adjustment nut is rotated till the bubble is exactly at the center of the bubble that's what i have told how to where we have to measure the angle we will bring the spirit level horizontal to it and i will make the bubble to come to the center if it is at the center that means the the surface where the you have rotated the uh, lock nut is exactly aligned with the angular surface taper surface with, the, with that we can able to measure the angle next is optical instrumentations so the four principles govern the application of optics in the measure uh, in the metrology the most uh, vital one is nothing but magnification when i say optical instrumentation that is nothing but by using some microscope or something you will try to measure the angles so the magnification enables the accurate measurement of the attributes of an object the second one is accuracy how accurately you are measuring device is there so for example in if you are using some uh, lights so in that lights you cannot able to read the readings properly okay a monochromatic light source provides a absolute standard of length and uh, and therefore ensures high degree of accuracy these principles have driven the development of large number of measuring instrumentations and comparators comparators are nothing but we can compare one one reading with respect to other reading so this section is devoted to such two such instrumentations which are most popularly angular measurement like auto calorimeter and angle decker so optical instrumentation is the third the principle is nothing but alignment it uses the light rays to establish the reference such as lines and planes the fourth significant principle for optical instrumentation is nothing but interferometer which is a unique phenomenon associated with the light interferometer nothing but interference of two lights okay mm. so this is auto calorimeter so in this what we are going to draw is we are going to send the light so this is my incident light beam so incident light beam is sent through an uh, lens so where the lens is having uh, capability of zooming the light 
where it will be projecting the light so it, so the light is going to pass and it is going to fall on the surface if the surface is horizontal the returning of the rays will be on the same path because the surface is horizontal for example my surface is this one without any uh, inclination so what happens means this ray will always pass through this again the return ray will also pass in this way itself okay so we can able to see that how the what is the distance which is obtained between the two rays so if if the surface is parallel there will be no uh, variation between the incident ray and the reflected ray if there is some uh, angle present so what happens means this surface will be returning easier and whereas this surface will be deviated so that deviations can be obtained like this so the reflected rays will be having some deviation so that deviations we are going to measure from uh, what deviation is obtained between the uh, incident ray and the reflected ray that that is we are going to obtain by use by an observer which is uh, kept at this so by using some kind of optical lens okay again uh, here we are going to have some uh, zooming capability where we are going to see the difference between them we are going to measure the distance so let us see how it is made it is a special form of telescope telescope zooming lens so which is used to measure the small angle with a high degree of resolution high degree means we can able to measure to larger extents so it is used for various applications such as precise alignment means if you are able to align the two surfaces properly or not verification of angle standards detection of angular movement and so on so if if it projects a beam of collimulated lights on a reflector which is def uh, deflecting by a, by a small angle deflected by a small angle about the vertical plane so that is the moment it is deflected by a small angle theta the light reflected back is magnified and focused either onto an eyepiece or a photo detector either will be having here a photo detector okay here this is a prism while the reflected ray comes and falls on it again we with respect to prism we are we are going to observe the light or the image is going to be observed or by using a photo sensitive light uh, instrument where we are going to read the images the the dots we are going to study okay the deflection between the beam and the reflected beam that is art i have to we have to keep an uh, an important note that is nothing but the ray which you are sending and the ray which it is getting reflected back so if they are both on a same position you you cannot able to say that the, the surface is deflected if they are having some displacement between the reflected beam and the incident beam then there is some kind of reflection so the re rectile is an eliminated target which Uh, with cross hair pattern so in this there will be a cross hair pattern which is position at exactly at the position of focal length of the objective lens which you are using so the plane mirror perpendicular to the optical axis serves as a purpose of reflecting an image pattern on the observation point and viewing system is required that is nothing but uh, there will be a system where you are going to view the images okay so the image of the cross wire this is done mostly by a auto calorimeter by means of a simple i piece okay simply by using an i piece the rotation of the plane is generally where the distance by what the reflected ray has been moved that we are going to measure by this that is nothing but d displacement is equal to 2 into f into theta where 2 uh, f is nothing but the focal length of the lens which you are going to take so before you measure the take this lens you will be knowing the focal length of that lens and theta is the angle by which it is being rotated why we are taking two is nothing but uh, on the above side also there will be deviation and other below side also there will be a deviation it is clear from the relations that the, the sensitivity of the auto calorimeter depends upon the focal length of the objective lens okay so longer the focal length la larger is the linear displacement we are going to obtain okay so again this four auto calorimeters are been divided into three types that is visual digital and laser visual is nothing but we generally use a, a normal light okay through a pin hole whose reflected image is observed by an operator through an eyepiece so visual calorimeter uh, collimeters are typically focused in infinitely making them useful for both shorter distance as well as long distance measurements digital auto auto calorimeter is generally nothing but electronic photo detector is used in digital means nothing but what you are going to have inst instead of having an eye you are you are going to use some kind of photo detectors which can able to read the readings okay that is nothing but the distance between the two uh, reflected beams and the incident beams can be studied by using a digital device okay to detect the reflected light beam a major advantage of this type of collimeter is nothing but it uses the digital signal processing technology where the readings will be given directly 
Next is la uh, laser auto auto collimator. Re laser auto collimator represents the future of the precise angle measurement in the in industry, where the laser beams uh, makes it an ideal for the measurement of ang angle of very small objectives like one mm in the diameter. Even one mm diameter can also be measured easily. Okay, what is the importance of laser compared to that of the um, normal visual light? Is nothing but by using uh, laser light, what we can do is we can able to uh, have a um, what we say. lower wavelengths can also be studied since the light is uh, deflected so till here we have done with our first unit this is a extra topic so i don't want to discuss this angle decorator so which is not there in your syllabus so with this your first unit is almost completed so if there is anything left in your first first unit please go through the syllabus and please let me know as per me the whole syllabus has been completed for the first unit of your metrology and instrumentation if something i have missed so please let me know so that i can cover it thank you